Good morning on this miserable rainy Thursday everyone at home and um, today our skill is to identify properties of 3D shapes and nets following on from our work yesterday. So we are going to go back to bite size and have a quick revision on th the properties of 3D shapes. It's crunch time for the 3D crew, and who's going to take home the coveted and totally pointless prize of, uh, most properties? Well, anyway, a 3D cube has six square faces. Edges? That's 12. Right, what about corners or vertices? That's the bits where the edges meet. Eight. Oh, cubes really smashing this. Time for the mighty square-based pyramid. Let's go. Faces, five. Edges, eight. And vertices, five again. Good try, pyramid, but cubes still in the lead. Finally, what about the sphere? So, faces, well, just the one. Edges, zero. Vertices, none. Oh, dear. Oh, well. Oh, come on, don't be like that. Where you going? What a sore loser. Okay, so hopefully that helps you remind you that 3D shapes are made of faces, edges and vertices. So a face is a flat or curved surface on a 3D shape. For example, a cube has six faces, a cylinder has three and a sphere has just got one. Edges, so the edges are where the two faces meet. So if I run my mouse along here, okay, that would be an edge, okay? The edge is what I'm running along here. Uh, for example, a cube has 12 edges, a cylinder has two and a sphere has none. And vertices are the point right here. So a vertex is a corner where the edges meet. So this pointy bit here would be a vertex. The plural for vertex is vertices. For example, a cube has eight, a cone has one and a sphere has none. Um, give me a big thumbs up if that's given you a really quick refresher on 3D shapes. Lovely. Okay, so we're the partner, so at home, grab an adult if you can. Um, and here we're just going to have a chat. What shapes are these? Can you remember? Now, Miss D always has a maths dictionary ready in class, okay, to help us. But um, at home, hopefully you've got um, access to the internet to see me, hello. Um, so have a quick look on Bite Size or um, find a maths, uh, like a maths is fun website and have a little look at 3D shapes just to remind yourself because the names of 3D shapes are always a little bit tricky to remember. So can anybody here name and give the properties of this shape? So we're gonna have a little chat in the classroom, pause the video if you like. Oh, I've got some hands already up. So. Can anyone name some of these shapes already? Let's start with naming them. Okay, Lils. This is a sphere, good girl, this is a sphere. So this one's a sphere. Uh, Will? This one's a cylinder, good boy. Any others that you can see? Ben? Yeah, lovely, good boy. This is a square-based pyramid. So if it looks like a pyramid, Okay, um, there are different types of pyramids. So have a look at this bottom. This one has a face on its bottom of a square. So it's a square based pyramid. Well done. What's this one called? Angel? Mm, not what I'm thinking of. Yeah, good girl, a triangular prism. prism. Good girl, well done, a triangular prism. Anyone know what this is called? I had to remind myself of this this morning, Ben? Mm, a diamond's a 2D shape, so this is an octahedron, okay, an octahedron. Okay, so I'll just skip through that. Let's have a look at some of these properties. So um, here we have two flat faces, okay, we have one curved face. We have two edges, we can see those, the 
edges of the shape and zero vertices. Why have we got zero vertices on this cylinder? What shapes mean that there's zero ver vertices? Alfie? Because there's no corners, it's just all the way around. Because it's circular, yeah? Because we've got two circular here, shapes, um, faces, that means that we haven't got any vertices. Okay, so here, let's have a look at our tri oh, square-based pyramid. Oh, goodness, my words are going to be all jumbled today. Our square-based pyramid. So here, we have five faces. So we've got, here we've got an isosceles triangle, here we've got an isosceles triangle, here we have an isosceles triangle, here we have an isosceles triangle, so that's four isosceles triangles, and on the bottom here we have a square, so that's five faces. We have eight edges, so these nice long lines running down, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, at home it might be worth drawing it along, because we're going to do that with here as well so draw it along with your fingers guys and then you can see and then the vertices so the bits where the edges meet the pointy bits if you will we've got one two three four five and you can literally imagine touching those can't you so guys with this shape i want you to pretend that it's in front of you okay so here we've got five faces so we have one, two, three, four, five different faces, okay, two of which are triangles on the end here. We have nine edges, so the edges are what, where the faces meet, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, okay. Here we have the vertices, so the point of it, one, two, Three, four, five, six. Everybody get that? Yeah. Okay, here we have eight faces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have 12 edges. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then we have six vertices. One, two, three, four, five, six. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Here we have one curved face. We've got no edges because it's completely round and smooth and no vertices. Okay, right, hands up at home, have a think. Which of the 2D shapes is not a face of this hexagonal prism? Okay, so let's have a look. So we know it's a hexagonal prism because it's got one, two, three, four, five, six edges on this face so hexagons have six edges so which 2d shape can you not see have a think at home so have we got any rectangles on faces have we got any parallelograms on the faces and we've we got any hexagons on the faces well we know one of those is definitely there Caitlin which shape could you say you can't see the parallelogram good girl so the parallelogram is not a face in that 3D shape. So if you had a net of that shape and you had rectangles and hexagons, you could really think about whether that would make it. But if you had a net and it had a random parallelogram, that would not make a hexagonal prism. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah? So understanding what the faces look like is going to really help you decide which nets would work and which ones wouldn't. Okay, so have a little think which 2D shapes and how many of each, so like do yourself a little shopping list, would you need to create this 3D shape? Do yourself a little shopping list at home, have a little look, what would you need? Have a look. What shape's this? How many of those do you think you'd need? What shape's this? Remember with 3D shapes, sometimes, especially when they're drawn, there are faces we can't see. 
Okay, who's got their shopping list? What, what, do we, what do we need to make this lovely 3D shape? Thomas? We need two pentagons. You need two pentagons, good. And how do you know that we need a pen? We need two pentagons? Uh, because there's one on the top, which is a five-sided shape, and then there's also going to be one on the bottom. Lovely, so we've got one, two, three, four, five sides here on each of these faces, and we've got two sets of those, lovely. So two pentagons. What other shapes do we need? Sam? Five rectangles, so we've got one, two, three, four, five. Good job. So we need two pentagons and five rectangles. Okay, have a little look. This net would make a hexagonal based pyramid. Remember we said that pyramids can have different bottoms. Okay, this is a hexagonal based pyramid. True or false would this net make a hexagonal based pyramid true or false Cameron's nodding at me Cameron I want to unpick I want to dissect your decision there why are you saying it's true my pickle because like, like possibly you can only really see the hexagon like the last side of the face and then like with the pyramids because it's like going around in like a kind of like slow way then like if you just like lift it up and then Right, part of it is correct. Part of what Cameron has said is correct. So Cameron, you're on to a really good start. This is a hexagon. So it's got one, two, three, four, five, six sides. So you're right, that would be a hexagonal base. But do I have enough isosceles triangles to go all the way around my pyramid? So if I folded that in, this would one would come up, this one would be over here, this one would be over here, this one would be over here, this one would fold all the way over to here. <gasps> but what's going to happen over here? There's going to be what? Have I got enough triangles to make my... No, I do not. False. It would need another isosceles triangle. So we have to look really carefully at our nets and we have to look at our shapes. Have we got the correct shapes? Yes. Have we got... Uh, like Cameron said, the shape that would fold into a net, yes, but have we got enough of those spaces? In this case, no. So which of these nets would make a cylinder and which would not make a cylinder? So have a look at those nets up there. Think of our cylinder. So I'll quickly go back to our cylinder really quickly so you can refresh yourselves. So this is our cylinder. This is what a cylinder looks like. Okay, have a little look at this net, these nets. Which ones do you think would make a cylinder? Which ones do you think wouldn't make a cylinder? Okay, have a little think at home. Guys, we're gonna do a thumbs up, thumbs down, okay? A, do you think it would make a cylinder or do you think it wouldn't make a cylinder? Join in at home. Got lots of thumbs up here. Okay, B, do you think it would make a cylinder or not make a cylinder? Well, Cameron's giving me a double thumbs down. He's like, no. <laughs> uh, C, do you think it would make a cylinder or do you think it wouldn't make a cylinder? Max is giving me a good thumbs up there. He thinks it would. Okay, so A and C would make a cylinder. They would be next to the cylinder because they have the correct faces that we would need, the correct amount of shapes, and they are positioned in a way that would create a cylinder. B wouldn't because you can tell one of those faces, that face in the middle there would not create a 3D cylinder, okay, because it is not the face we need. So we actually need a rectangle in the middle there, and that is not a nice rectangle that's gonna fold into a nice smooth cylinder, okay? Give me a nod if you think, yeah, that makes sense, yeah? Okay, so our steps to success today. Look carefully at the 3D shape and think about which 2D shapes you can see and which ones you can't, because there's always, when we draw 3D shapes, there's always faces we can't see. What are the hidden faces? Use the 3D shapes you made yesterday to help you look at the nets and decide whether they would or they wouldn't work. So at home, 
hopefully if you did yesterday's lesson, you've got a nice little set of nets, okay, that you can look at, and you can look at that net down there, and you can say, would that create this? What do we think? Um, look carefully at how each of the faces is set out. So is it set out in a way that would be easily to fold, and have you got enough faces there? Look at the properties of the 3D shape. What should they have? Will the nets create these properties? Okay, and I've got you your definitions there to remind you, okay, of what, what a 3D shape's properties should be. Okay, I'm going to quickly explain um, the resources, the sheet, so that you guys know which one to pick. Okay, so I'm going to explain spicy and then you can decide whether you'd like to go to mild or hot or whether you'd like to stick with spicy. So mild has a little red D, spicy has a little uh, blue E and then um, hot has a little GD in gold. Okay, now like always these are set out so they're very similar, okay, but obviously mild will be slightly easier and hot will be slightly trickier. So 5A and 5B are asking you um, which faces are, which shapes create the faces of the 3D shapes there, okay? So which 2D shape is not a face of this truncated pyramid? Oh, truncated is a new word. Does anyone know what it means by looking at that pyramid? What has that pyramid had done to it? Henry VIII style. <laughs> Alfie. Yeah, so a truncated shape is when an edge or a, um, a vertices is flattened, okay? So what 2D shapes are not, is not a face in this truncated pyramid, okay? So 6A and 6B, list which 2D shapes and how many of each you would need to make the net of this shape, okay? So that's your shopping list. What do you need to create these 3D shapes? 7a and 7b you're looking at the nets and you're deciding whether it would make that 3d shape or not so would this make an oct octagonal base pyramid would this make a pentagonal prism true or false i'm just going to have a little look at this so if that's a pentagonal prism there's a pentagon there hmm not too sure what this shape would be and how it would fit in so maybe have a little look at that if you're doing spicy 6a which of these nets would create a cone and which wouldn't so think about what a cone looks like at the bottom so it's nice and curved at the bottom so which one of these nets wouldn't make that lovely curve and then 6b which of these nets would make a truncated there's that word again so an edge that's been flattened or a um, vertices that's been flattened which would not Okay, so which of these nets would make a truncated pyramid and which wouldn't? Everyone happy to go? Okay, so mild is going to be slightly easier. So we're looking at, we're not using that new word and we're having a look at nice simple nets. Spicy we've been through and then hot, you're looking at 3D shapes that might contain two 3D shapes combined. Okay, so much trickier. So pick your challenge to where you are in your confidence level with Nets and 3D shapes. Okay, okay, good luck at home. We'll see you soon. We hope you're having a lovely time and stay nice and warm today because it's horrible out there. Um, and we'll see you soon. Okay.